Welcome in, everybody. We are about to get started. So if you're catching this later, make sure that you tune in for the whole thing. If you're tuning into this after the fact, uh, welcome. Uh, this is one of our first attempts at doing an entire workshop via live stream on Facebook. But we're also going to be posting this on uh on YouTube, so you can come back in, but definitely post your comments or questions below. I'll be monitoring those as we go. So this ends up being a bit more like a, uh, a discussion than a presentation like we typically do in the office. But uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Dr. Jake Tucker. I'm the owner of Good Life Family Chiropractic here. Uh, we do these workshops on a monthly basis, sometimes as much as twice a month just so that we can give you the latest on health information to keep your body healing and functioning at a high level. We believe here that God designed our bodies for health and that all we have to do is follow his laws and principles if we're truly going to get healthy. And so today I wanted to cover that from a vitamin perspective, a nutrition perspective, if you will, because when you think about it, you know, we are really incredibly fearfully and wonderfully made there are no questions about it when you think about how we were made when that sperm and the egg came together inside your mother's womb and they started they came together they formed that single cell and then they duplicated and ref and replicated themselves 36 trillion times differentiating itself in into this living loving thinking clay all these organ cells and tissues that make up who we are it's incredible how, just how that happened. It happened all on its own without anybody saying anything except God Almighty designing you and knitting you together one bit by one bit, one cell at a time. And then you think about how little science still truly understands about what goes on inside of us. And it's incredible that we're even here today. And that really speaks to the intelligence that God placed inside of our nervous system that animates and controls and so that intelligence, it needs no help. It just needs no interference. But one of the biggest things I find interferes in that intelligence is actually coming from that nutri nutritional perspective. We all know how to eat well, but we don't realize what we actually have to do to stay healthy. And what we're finding is that most of the diseases that Americans are dying from, so whether that's heart disease or cancer or diabetes or respiratory conditions, they more often have to do with lack than they have to do with the presence of a bacteria or a virus or anything else. In fact, oftentimes what we're seeing is the bacteria and the viruses that we accumulate over time actually build up our immune system and help us to overcome these long-term. And so I wanna teach you as much as I can in this next hour so that you get the most out of your nutrition, the most out of your food, but you also know what to supplement with so that you can stay healthy and stay functioning at a high level. So let, let's dive into this because this really started our you know, just understanding of what supplementation needed to be back during the first world wars when everybody was on these rations. And we, we determined that you can break this down into a couple different key categories. And you can see those off to my, to my left, your right. But it, it really breaks down into three key categories and then some other vitamins and some minerals. And so we're going to dive into those today. But it, it really, you know, you have to have a basic understanding of the overarching thing before you can go and dive deep on each and every one of these. And so uh, what we've found, though, is that nutritional deficiencies, they really do. They are linked and strongly correlated uh, to most of the diseases that kill us. In fact, if you look at this list off here to the side, we see that over 85 percent of all deaths that happen in the United States happen because of these things. So we really need to be diving in and figuring out exactly what causes it. And when you just look at the first one, cancer, cancer is projected to be the number one cause of death here in 2020. According to the Journal of Pharmaceutical Research, cancer is a lifestyle preventable disease and needs early, early uh, intervention before we're even diagnosed. And in fact, before we're even capable of being, being diagnosed, we need to start addressing cancer. You look at heart disease, heart disease, same thing. We know that the earlier we start to address that from a nutritional perspective, from a lifestyle perspective, the more that we have an opportunity to avoid it. And that's between those two, that's almost 63% of all deaths that happen in the United States. And so we're really going to address this. You know, you look at B vitamins, you look at C vitamin, you know, it, it really having a lack of those in your body, having a lack of iron, having a lack of zinc or folate, you know, those, uh, 
can create DNA damage, which may lead to cancer. So it, it's very important that we get enough of those nutrients in our bodies. So what is essential? And, and you may see this or you might hear this word, an essential micronutrient or essential macronutrient. That word essential, it literally means that your body cannot make it on its own. The intelligence inside you and the components of your body, it needs something from the outside coming in. And so that usually comes in the, in the context of food. And so that really breaks down to macro and micronutrients. And let's break those down one by one. So a, a macronutrient here, that breaks down into carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Uh, so really, when most people look at this, they look at macros from a calorie perspective, because we've always been taught, if you want to lose weight, then you have to measure calories in versus calories out, the amount of food that you're eating versus the amount of exercise or work that you're doing to burn those calories. Unfortunately, that's a, that's a very, very small portion of what's going on. It's an incomplete picture or perspective of what's actually happening here. Carbohydrates are usually going to be the transport for the most micronutrients. And we'll get into micronutrients in a minute and what those are. Fat is usually essential because about 70% of your nervous system and every single cell is surrounded by fat. And you require fat to live. Protein Protein is going to be making up those different amino acid chains, and those amino acid chains are, are very essential to you being able to repair muscle and being able to rebuild yourself after doing that work. So these are very essential. But from just a pure, pure perspective of, of uh, calories, what you're looking at for a single gram of carbohydrates is about three uh, calories per gram of carbohydrate. From a fat perspective, you're looking at nine calories per gram of fat. And you're also looking at about three and a half, maybe even four calories per gram of protein. And so just from that perspective, you can see how easy it is to vilify fat because you're getting way more calories. The thing about fat though, is that it fills you up at a much faster rate at a decreased calorie rate than what you might think. And so you can eat more fat and be way more full than if you ate way more carbohydrate. And so it's really important that we don't be scared of fat because there are certain essential fatty acids that your body requires just to stay healthy. So what are micronutrients? Micronutrients break down into vitamins and minerals. And so let's go through the vitamins first. And we're really looking at the ones that are, are most deficient in. And so starting off, we want vitamin a. Vitamin A and those carotenes are readily found in those root vegetables, especially the orangish ones, orangish or reddish, and then uh, also in spinach as well. Uh, then we're looking at vitamin E. So vitamin E is also known as tocopherol. It's an antioxidant uh, that helps the body form red blood cells and uses vitamin K. You can get this from sunflower seeds, from almonds, from nuts and seeds. Um, and then we're looking at vitamin C, and this is most commonly associated with citrus fruit. Uh, then we're also looking at uh, vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 is a water-soluble vitamin, much like vitamin C. Um, a, D, E, and K are the fat-soluble vitamins, your B vitamins, your C vitamins. These are the water-soluble ones. Uh, this one is uh, readily found in citrus fruits and vegetables, and uh, you know, very, very necessary uh, for just daily processes that happen inside your body. Vitamin B6, also found in root vegetables, citrus fruits. Uh, then we're looking at uh, your spinach, incorporating all B vitamins. Vitamin E, I didn't mention that, is also found in there as well. And then when we're looking at your minerals, uh, Oftentimes minerals get overlooked. We don't usually take mineral supplements, but things like sea salt is very rich in minerals. Also, when we're looking at things like phosphorus, phosphorus, it's a component in your bones and cell membranes. It's found in salmon, it's found in yogurt, it's found in turkey, Turkey, very important mineral. Uh, calcium, most people assume they have a calcium deficiency and so they try to get it from diet. It's a critical component in bones and teeth. Uh, it also insists in muscle function, and blood vessel contraction. Uh, it's found in milk and cheeses, but it's actually found much more in much more uh, um, bioavailable form in nuts and seeds and uh, spinach as well. And looking at magnesium, most Americans are deficient in magnesium. This is found 
it's a it's a power nutrient. Uh, it moderates over three three hundred enzyme reactions, and it's found in whole wheat. It's found in legumes, so beans, and then nuts and seeds. So very important there. And then iron also found in legumes, nuts, and seeds. And then zinc, legumes, nuts, seeds, and things like turkey, things like seafood. And then we've got potassium. Potassium is found in avocados. Copper, also nuts and seeds. Selenium, and a very important antioxidant, if you're gonna fight off free radicals, it's found in those meats, the legumes, the nuts and seeds. And then, of course, all of these things are found in spinach, your leafy greens. So you absolutely need these things. If you get nothing else out of this, know that you're getting most of what you need from your leafy greens. But what's the problem? Here's the problem. You do not get most of this from your diet. Unfortunately, if you tried, you would have to eat so many pounds of food. Most of the requirements from your body uh, that your body needs, you cannot get from your food anymore. Even just looking at a head of broccoli, a head of broccoli today is about th has about 30% of the nutrients that a head of broccoli had in the 1930s, about one third less than a head of broccoli had in the 1970s. And so we, we, we need to be getting more of this, but it really breaks down to a couple key components. And that has to do with a lot of what the state of Nebraska is known for. Our number one, our agricultural practices. We've over farmed our soil. And so we're getting less nutrients. There's less nutrients available in the soil. And so there's less nutrient uptake into our plants, into our foods. Also pollution. Uh, we, we spray our foods with an incredible amount of pesticides. Uh, pollution has robbed our soil of the nutrients and therefore our food of a lot of these nutrients. And then just the ways that we cook and prepare our foods, you know, boiling, simmering, poaching, grilling, canning, freezing, they all, as we heat or cool down our foods, it breaks down the molecular bonds uh, that hold all these cells and minerals and vitamins together inside the food and make it less bioavailable for us to be able to absorb. And so what we're finding is that our Americans are chronically deficient in most of these nutrients. So it also has to do with poor diet, though. You know, you look at those foods that food that those uh, essential micronutrients are available in, and then you look at the foods that we're actually consuming. While those healthy foods may you may have a possibility of getting as much as you would need out of it, most of the foods that we consume are very energy dense, very high sugar, have a ton of damaged fats that do cause heart disease, do cause cancers, and then they're also processed foods. And they're artificial, they use artificial sweeteners and all these things have a problem that lead up to us being wired and tired. And then you look at our bodies. You know, the average American looks more like the, the individual on the screen uh, than the person in the 1930s. You know, and it really, you look at genetics and we've done work, workshops on epigenetics, but epigenetics have led us to where we're at now, to where some of us are dealing with genetic conditions. But yeah. If you did things right, may be somewhat reversible over the course of your life, but your genes are what they are because you've turned on certain triggers inside of those genes because of your lifestyle. And so your genes have set you up for failure in a lot of ways, and then your lifestyle has gone in and it's reinforced those failures over and over. And then there are biological factors. If, you're, if you have become sick because of one thing or another, if you start taking medication, if you start getting surgeries, such as getting your gallbladder out or getting your you know, different pieces of your digestive system taken out, your absorption of some of these micronutrients makes it much harder to get those in. And then there are also lifestyle factors. When you're sedentary, you're much less likely to be getting in the essential micronutrients that you need. If you're stressed, that cortisol actually comes in and it turns off your digestive system and turns on this flight or Fight or flight reaction that brings all of your blood flow away from your digestive organs into the extremity muscles. Then you, you look at something like alcohol use or tobacco use or drug use, and these things have actually been shown to impair the absorption of some of these nutrients. And so we absolutely need to be looking out for some of these things. Oral hygiene can absolutely uh, create a deficiency or an efficiency in absorption of some of these micro micronutrients, some minerals, and some of these vitamins. Eating out, food that's made outside of the home is far less likely to have uh, the nutrients in it than you need that than food that's inside the home. In fact, in a survey of every single research study that's ever been done on diets, they found that the most efficient diet is not any one particular category of diets, whether that's keto or the, uh, you know, the uh, seafood diet, 
or um, any of these Mediterranean diets or the paleo diet. In fact, it's consistent across the board. Diets that are done by making food in the home in your own kitchen are the best for losing weight and sustaining long-term health. And then health conditions such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease can absolutely impair your body's ability to uptake and absorb these nutrients. And so we have to focus on addressing these from the cause. And that's where the five essentials come in. And so what the five essentials are, are a system of living that max living has put together for you to apply to be able to get to the root cause of any of these deficiencies, any of these obstacles, and really does solve so many. And so what these break down to, number one, the core chiropractic. And chiropractic is not so much about me selling you a series of adjustments as making sure that you have your nervous system healing and functioning at 100%. You look at the one of the biggest deficiencies in our current healthcare system. No, we do not know what health is. We only treat symptoms. And then when we're treating symptoms, we completely ignore your nervous system, which is when we learn this in med school, we actually learn that it's the system that controls all the other symptoms. And we don't check it until you have a symptom in that, which requires a 40% decrease in function in your nervous system before a symptom even shows up. And then nutrition, we eat to live, not live to eat. We eat good food, but we eat food that supports life and helps give our body what it needs so that you can be healthy. From a mindset perspective, knowing what health is, but then knowing the path to get there, right? Because with the best of intentions, we can travel as fast as we want down I-80. But even if we intend to get to Miami, if all we ever do is stay on I-80 heading west or east, we're never going to get to Miami. We actually have to know the path to get to Miami. Oxygen and exercise. We have a biological requirement, a genetic requirement to move on a daily basis. And if we don't get that in, if we don't get enough oxygen into every cell, then we will not stay healthy. Our bodies will get sick and die early. And then from a toxicity perspective, we don't even realize how many toxins we're exposed to on a daily basis. And so it's very, very important that we're making sure that we get as many of these essentials in on a daily basis. The essential that we're not doing is the essential that can kill you. So it's important that we make sure that we're addressing all of these, especially in a time like this where everyone is stressed out, when they're eating at home, home but they're uh, not wanting to cook, where everyone is dealing with fear and this mindset coming from the media, we need to make sure that we're addressing these from a causal perspective. So let's dive into mindset number one, because this really does, it breaks down to one key category, and that is stress. Because when you have stress, it can lead to some major, major issues in absorption of micronutrients. I talked about just how stress can affect your cortisol levels. And when you have other stress hormones like cortisol hitting your bloodstream, it does. It turns off or turns down the focus on the function of your digestive system. And as your digestive system suppresses, your immune system suppresses and down regulates, and you do become much more likely to get sick. And that's not something that we want for anyone. So we have to focus on making sure that we're not focused on the stress, that we're not focused on fighting the stress, but that we're focused on creating peace. Creating peace is really the key thing here to making sure that your body gets healthy, stays healthy, and is able to absorb all the nutrients and minerals that it needs to create those building blocks to recreate you. And so remember, your body formed you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made but you are also remaking yourself. At least once every 15 years, you get a brand new you. Your stomach lining replaces itself every three days. Your digestive system, it, it's really within a matter of weeks that it's brand new. Your heart and your lungs every five to 10 years, your bones and your nerves every 15 years, they're brand new. You need this. And so if you are getting indigestion constantly, if you're craving caffeine or sugar all the time, this may be a sign that you are overstressed, that you're not creating enough peace. And what it takes to create peace is actually going in and focusing on those things that create a peaceful environment. Taking the time out of your day to meditate on God's word, taking the time out of your day to pray, taking the time out of the day to focus on those things that do make you happy, that give you some joy, that focusing on the people that fill you up, that build you up. Those are the things that we need to be focused on. Next category, chiropractic care. And what chiropractic care is all about 
is the health and function of your nerve system. So simple question, what controls all function and healing in your body? Yeah, I, I asked this question one time in a workshop and somebody with all sincerity said, your liver. And as much as the liver does control and as important as the liver is, I mean, you cannot survive without a liver. You can't survive a single second without nerve supply. Think about it. For your heart to beat, for your lungs to breathe, for a cut on your leg to heal, a signal has to go from your brain, down your spinal cord, out the nerves to every organ, cell, and tissue in your body. It doesn't happen any other way. And we know that because if we cut your brain stem, every organ, cell, and tissue below stops and dies immediately, like that. You cannot digest food. You cannot you know, take a drink of water. It all stops when your nervous system stops. And that's really what chiropractic is all about, is making sure that your nervous system is healing and functioning well. But here's what we know from the research. When your spine is in the proper alignment, basically what it looks like there when you're looking at it from the side, those three 45 degree curves. And when it's straight up and down from the front, we know that your nervous system heals and functions at or near 100%. But when that gets out of alignment by even two millimeters or two degrees and is left there for five minutes or more, we see a 60% decrease in function through those nerves in the areas where that's restricted. It actually decreases the ability of your brain to be able to tell your cells, tissues, and organs what to do, telling your digestive system what to do. And so that interference can then interfere with your ability to absorb minerals and nutrients and vitamins and distribute them out from your food to those organ cells and tissues that are replacing themselves. And so what chiropractors are trained to do is assess your spine and assess the nervous system for any area of interference. And what we've done in Max Living is we've taken that to a five essentials perspective, assessing your nervous system from a five essentials perspective to see what might be interfering in that because even your nervous system is replacing itself every 15 years and so if you're not getting the things in nutritionally that allow it to heal and function at a great level then it's not going to heal and function at a great level and you're not going to be healthy at a great level because here's the thing is most americans they assume that they're healthy because they feel fine but you can have a decrease in function in 40 percent before you even feel a symptom in fact heart disease the number one killer in the united states last year it took you having that actively building in your body for 20 years before you would feel a symptom of that. And the number one most common symptom of the heart, of heart disease is the heart attack. 63% of the time, the very first symptom that you'll feel of heart disease is the heart attack itself. And even though we have the best healthcare system in the world from a emergency care perspective, you walking into the emergency room from a heart attack, you have a better chance of surviving that here in the United States than anywhere else. It's still just a 50% survival rate. And so we can't base our health on how we feel. We have to focus on the real definition of health. That real definition of health, according to the World Health Organization, is 100% optimal function and healing. The ability of your body to heal and function, and that goes directly back to that nervous system. And so if we want to be healthy, we have to make sure that that nervous system is healing and functioning well. And the problem is if your spine looks like that one on the far right, it's not going to be. In fact, what we see is when you have that level of arthritis, that you start shrinking in height, you start decreasing your life expectancy. If you have a scoliosis, you have a loss of curve in your neck, it decreases your life expectancy by the same amount as having type two diabetes, actively building in your body, diagnosably building in your body, and you not even having any medication to manage it. That's the, that's the effect that this thing has. And so we need to make sure that your nervous system is healing and functioning well. The good thing is you don't have to wait until it looks like that to get any care. In fact, we can do this preventively. We can do this proactively and we can make sure that your body is healing and functioning well. But here are some of the biggest problems. When your spine is out of alignment, these are some of the most common symptoms that you will deal with. Headaches, one of the most common one that we see in the office. If we have a misalignment of the top bone in the neck that presses down the nerves that go up and around the head, it restricts the blood flow, it restrict, restricts cerebrospinal fluid flow, and it creates headaches. And then what we see is that also, that goes out to the eyes, that goes out to the ears, it affects your equilibrium. And we see that those same symptoms that create the headache, the same cause that creates the headaches, also creates other problems in the other systems that are associated with that. You know, you go drop down this list, 
over here to the side. We get down into numbness and tingling with sciatica in that low back. If you pinch down the nerves in the low back, like we see over to the side here, and then it actually can create the symptoms of sciatica. It can create numbness and tingling running down the legs into the feet. And so if you're experiencing any of these right now, then I, I suggest that you call the office. You can call or text 402-413-8825. We'll set up a consultation. We can go through what might have caused all this. We can do a history. I can have you fill out a form digitally online, and then we can look over it together. But call or text that number, and we'll go ahead and get that time set up so that we can assess your nervous system and make sure that it is healing and functioning well. So then we have to look at toxins, right? Because toxins can come in, they can interfere. Really, too much toxicity exposure, especially a heavy metal toxicity, can create virtually any symptom. We go back to this last list. If you have a perfect spine, but you have toxicity, in your life, it can create virtually any of those symptoms. And so we need to make sure that we're knowing where these are coming from. And oftentimes, it's coming from some of the most common things that we're exposed to on a daily basis. You look at some of these things over to the side here. Our beauty products, you know, they can have uh, parabens, they can have BPA, they can have BPB, they can have estrogen mimickers. You know, you look at our toothpaste, it has SLS, that's an engine degrees or sodium lauryl sulfate. You, you go over and vaping, vaping, it, we're going to find out as we get some more long-term research on vaping, that some of these artificial chemicals that we're getting into our lungs from vaping are just as dangerous to our long-term health as smoking. Oh, we already know it, carcinogenic cigarette smoke, cigar smoke, tobacco, these non-tobacco or tobacco-related products are also, also very dangerous to us from a toxin perspective. Our water bottles, it, you know, they may be BPA-free. Are they BPB-free? Are they BPS-free? We, we need to look at some of these other petroleum-based products. Pesticides. We know that pesticides cause cancers. In fact, Monsanto is losing billions of dollars in lawsuits right now because of all the deaths that we're linking to these digestive cancers that spraying Roundup on our plants and on our foods, especially over years and years has built up in our digestive system. And so we need to make sure that we're minimizing our exposures to these toxins, but we also need to make sure that we're eating a diet that can help us detoxify. How do we detoxify? It's not through a cleanse. It's not through a supplementation program, it's actually by supporting the health of the systems that naturally detoxify. Think about it. Your digestive system is a tube that starts at your mouth and ends at your behind. And if you give your body the right tools to filter out the bad foods or the bad non-foods with the good foods being absorbed into your digestive system, then your body will naturally detoxify. The liver, we talked about how important that is. Maybe not as important as your nervous system, but definitely supports the detoxification process inside your body. You talk about your gallbladder and its role in providing bile into the digestive system. You talk about your kidneys and its role in filtering out urine through uh, your, your urinary tract. And you need to support all these with essential micronutrients. The gut lining, the microbiome, getting healthy bacteria, healthy exposures to germs in our environment actually helps to increase the health of our immune system or properly regulate, I should say, the health of our immune system and allow our bodies to heal and function well. And then we have to jump into oxygen and exercise. You think about it, every single metabolic process in our bodies requires oxygen. And how do you get oxygen to every cell, tissue, and organ in your body? Well, through movement. Movement is life. We know that from a neurological perspective, just moving the joints in your spine creates ATP in the brain, but a movement perspective from a physical and physiological perspective actually provides oxygen supply to every cell and tissue and organ inside your body. And so whether we're talking about the nervous system, the digestive system, the detoxification pathways in your body, or fitness wise, getting your muscles built up, we need those muscles just to be able to create blood flow. You think about the uh, venous structure, the way that your veins are able to get blood back into your heart and lungs to get more oxygen, to go out through the arteries and into the capillaries and provide oxygen to every cell tissue and organ in your body is through the contraction of your muscles. The distal 
portions of your body pump blood back to your heart, not because your heart is pumping, but because the rest of your muscles are moving. And so if you don't get enough exercise in your life, you will have a decrease in deficiency in oxygen in every cell tissue and organ in your body. And so we, we know from the research that when you exercise, that you have better digestive function. It absolutely increases digestion. It decreases and relieves constipation. You combine exercise with healthy eating and you decrease your risk factors that make it more likely that you will feel the effects of some of these chronic lifestyle diseases. This is an absolutely essential part. You have a genetic requirement for exercise. And so what most people know are that you should be getting about 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity, cardiovascular exercise on a daily basis. This is a, an incomplete statement and doesn't do exercise its proper justice. In fact, we know that when you work out at a high intensity interval type training versus doing steady state like a cardiovascular exercise, that you receive a metabolic effect that lasts almost four times as long. I mean, in fact, when you do steady state workout, if you get on a treadmill, you walk for 30 minutes, great. It, it gives you benefit for about 30 minutes. And then that metabolic effect tails off. But when you do high intensity interval training, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 20 seconds on, minute break, 20 seconds on again. What we see is the metabolic effect ramps up such that you're actually getting a greater metabolic effect after you exercise for the next 36 hours. You're actually burning calories from that one workout that only lasted about 15 minutes. Whereas when you're working out for 30 minutes during cardiovascular ex exercise, your metabolic effect stops after that, uh, after that exercise is done. And so we need to make sure that we're getting the most bang for our buck. And I know the gyms are closed right now. And so doing this at home, you can go to maxt3.com. And for $10, $9.99, you can get a lifetime membership for this gym membership. So this is not a monthly membership fee. You just go there, log in once, pay your $9.99, and you will get access to this website forever. Forever. So long as we're around, you're going to have access to this and you'll get over 60 different modules on how to work out the body. These exercises were designed for you to be able to work out at an Olympic level, an Olympic athlete level, but starting out as with as low a fitness level as your grandma. And so maybe she's in better shape than you, but there are modifications for every exercise. So again, if you're dealing with any health conditions and you need to talk to a healthcare professional, you can call or text 402-413-8825 and we can set up a consult for you to go through everything. Let's get into nutrition because nutrition is really where we're going to get most of these micronutrients from. Remember, we, we have to be doing those other things in order to make it more likely for us to absorb these. But it, if we don't ever put these things in our body, then we're never going to get them out. If all we do is eat McDonald's cheeseburgers or all we do is eat Pizza Hut for dinner every single night, we're not going to be getting all the nutrients we need. And so our diet really should be looking like this right over here. If, it, if what we're putting in our bodies looks like this, we're probably going to be getting closer to the minimum amounts required to keep our bodies healthy, to give our bodies those building blocks to keep us healthy and functioning at a high level. So in order to optimize the nutrient content in the foods that we eat, we have to first choose nutrient-dense foods. So what does that mean? Well, honestly, it means breaking the bank and buying organic or even better getting foods that are in season now i know we're, we're in early early spring right now and so there's not a lot of foods that are in season but as we get closer into these summer months we're going to see more and more and more that we can actually get that in season. the next thing that we want to do is we want to avoid or eliminate trans fats and refined grains refined grains are empty calories trans fats damage your body and are actually linked to the inflammation that can create cancer in our body. We want to avoid or eliminate alcohol. If we can minimize our uh, intake of alcohol, then we will eliminate one of those main toxins that interferes with the absorption of many, many, many B vitamins. We also want to avoid or eliminate non-foods, processed foods, uh, like canned foods, foods with added sugars, 
And these foods do not add value to your nutrition and your damage to your body. So examples, the most empty calories, the most the foods that have the uh, that don't have very many nutrients are foods like bacon. I know it's on the it's on the paleo diet, it's on the ketogenic diet, but it's not very nutrient dense. Sausage, same category. Cakes, so right, desserts in general. Cheese is also not very nutrient dense. Cookies, donuts, energy drinks, fruit drinks, and this is one that that gets even my in laws a lot. Is they assume that it's a it's a uh, get a serving of fruit by getting this juice. No, the the juice removes. So the juicing process removes so many of the nutrients from the fruit that you're not getting the same benefit out of it. Uh, getting ice cream. Ice cream is very, very nutritionally empty. Pizza, another one that doesn't have very many nutrients. And then sports drinks and sodas, basically getting zero value out of those things. And so we need to be focusing on getting those things from our diet. So what can we do? Well, we need to, we need to be able to decode these nutrition labels like we're seeing off to the side here. But most of the time when we look at these, we're, look, we're looking at the calories, but calories content doesn't tell us much about the nutritional value. In fact, you go down these macronutrients, it's not gonna give us very much out of what we need. In fact, we need to skip this section here of the nutrient label and drop all the way down to the bottom to the ingredients list. That ingredients list, or looking at some of those uh, vitamin content, the percentage of the vitamins that we're getting tells us a whole lot more about the food. But the ingredient list, that should be the biggest thing because really, if it only has one or two or three ingredients in it, it's actually going to be more nutritionally dense and nutrient dense than things that may be low in calories and low in fat and have a lot of vitamins in it, especially if it was just fortified with those vitamins. You want to be getting natural servings there. We need to check servings per container and the number of servings. Check for the ingredients that you want to avoid, things like trans fat or added sugars, things like corn sweetener, corn syrup, dextrose, fructose, fruit juice concentrates, glucose, high fructose corn syrup, invert sugar, lactose, maltose, anything that ends in oast, malt syrup, raw sugar, sucrose, sucralose, sugar syrup, cane crystals, cane sugar, crystalline fructose, evaporated cane juice, corn syrup solids, malt syrup, or enriched, it means that it's been stripped of its nu nutrients and we're not getting that. Uh, percent daily value also is only out of a 2000 calorie diet. You may need more or less depending on who you are, how big you are, your activity level. Uh, be aware of what's in the package as well. If it says BPA free, it means it's, it doesn't have bisphenol A, which is an est known estrogen mimicker. If it says non-GMO, it means that they haven't genetically modified it to be able to carry more pesticides on it. And if it's USDA organic, that has a specific set of protocols that has to follow and means different things. Uh, you can look at that based off of which whichever company organized that. If it's the USDA, you can go to their website and see uh, what their requirement for organic labeling are. But those are the things that you want to look for when you're looking at a food label. Um, then from there, what do we eat? Well, we want to eat a food that's very much close to what God intended for our diets to be made up of. And in, in Max Living, we put together these plans for you to eat on. The core plan are for healthy individuals looking to support their health. And that actually starts with many healthy fats. So what are healthy fats? And this is the discussion I have to have with most Americans because that's most of my patient base. We don't have a healthy relationship with fats. Most of the fats that we consume are unhealthy because they're so highly processed. A healthy fat is a fat that comes from a natural source and is unadulterated. So things like avocado, things like eggs, things like salmon, things like nuts and seeds, those are a good source of healthy fats. Those are full of essential fats. Full fat dairy. If you're going to consume dairy, get a natural source of dairy, something that's been grass fed, something that's been unadulterated, that hasn't been heated up so that those molecular bonds are still in place for you to be able to get the most bang for your buck. Uh, we need animal source proteins, things that were raised naturally. Uh, and natural has no meaning when it's on a label, but what you're looking for are grass fed. Um, if, if it needs to be organic, it can be. Organic only means it's been grass fed 50% of the time and that its sources were only sprayed with organic pesticides. If you're gonna get whole grains on the core plan, then uh, you're gonna make sure that 
or if you're going to eat grains, you're going to make sure that they're whole and ideally they're ancient grains because those are more nutritionally dense. You want to get a variety of fruits and vegetables. Ideally, you're getting at least five servings of vegetables every single day and at least three servings of fruit every single day. Eight total servings of fruits and vegetables with an emphasis on those vegetables. And then the carbohydrates that you are eating, those are going to be plant-based. You want to get those carbohydrates coming from vegetables, ideally. And then we have to make a note about food sensitivities. You know, you can summarize the core plan by saying, if God made it, eat it. If man made it, leave it. But if you're eating foods that your body's developed an immune response to, that can be one of the most dangerous things that you're putting in your body. Uh, for instance, I've developed a sensitivity to dairy and gluten. And so I have to eat a gluten-free, dairy-free diet on top of these things. Even though God created gluten and it's naturally occurring in grains, my body doesn't tolerate those things well. And then processed foods as well, oftentimes will incorporate them. Uh, dairy, uh, many cultures on this planet have developed uh, an ability to process lactose after breastfeeding. But there are also many cultures that have not sustained that ability. African-Americans in general do not sustain the ability to process lactose well. Asians usually end up being lactose sensitive. For me, it's actually a casein allergy that I can't tolerate. I will break out in my skin when I consume any type of dairy. And so looking for uh, things that are dairy free, I drink a lot of coconut milk because I'm able to do that. So the core plan again, healthy food for healthy families. And so again, summarize it. If God made it, eat it. If man made it, leave it. Let's jump into the advanced plan. It's the core plan. But what we're doing is we're eating to reduce inflammation. Chronic inflammation will destroy the body. We know that chronic inflammation coming from lifestyle is the cause of most cancers, most heart disease, most diabetes. And so we're looking to reduce that. And so grains are inherent to, inherently somewhat inflammatory, definitely acidic. And also we want to avoid sugars as much as possible. We want to eat a low sugar, low glycemic diet on this plan. And so we're going to reduce anything. We're not going to have any added sugars whatsoever on either plan. But then we're also looking at those low glycemic fruits and vegetables. And so we're going to be avoiding root vegetables. And then the fruits that we're eating are only going to be limited to berries, Granny Smith apples, and those citrus fruits that are low sugar, things like grapefruit, lemons, and lemons. And so that, that's basically it. You can summarize that you can go back to the Old Testament laws on eating. Um, this is really where we're going as a backbone because we understand that God had in his mind, in his plan, the perfect design for us. So when we eat the foods that he designed us to eat, we just do better. And look, if you need a consultation, call or text me at 402-413-8825 and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, we'll set up a consultation. We'll sit down. We'll talk about your dietary restrictions. Obvi obviously, these are very broad guidelines, and we want to make sure that you're getting all the nutrients that you need out of your food. But yeah, you can call, call or text the office, uh, even my cell phone at 402-413-8825. So what are the most common nutritional deficiencies? Well, look across the screen there. You can see those here. Now, they're coming from calcium. They're cutting, coming from vitamin D. Now, vitamin D does occur in some foods naturally, but is very, very low. The most prominent form of vitamin D comes from sunshine. Iron as well is another common deficiency. Uh, vitamin B12, especially for people that are uh, vegan or vegetarian, they deal with those. And then folate, uh, folic acid is what a lot of people know this as. This most people is associated with pregnancy, needing more folic acid during pregnancy. And actually, folate is the naturally occurring version of this B9, this B vitamin. And then magnesium is another one. So looking at these, uh, what does this create? Well, when we're looking at nutrient deficiencies, the signs of deficiency um, in uh, uh, for calcium are muscle cramps and then abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias, uh, what we diagnose this with. For vitamin D3, uh, it would be uh, looking at uh, fatigue, muscle aches or weakness, or really anyone who lives in a cold weather state that has winter, <laughs> you're going to be deficient in vitamin D3 for at least three months out of the year. And so it's very important to supplement vitamin D3. 
Iron, uh, vegetarians and vegans, again, this one, we're seeing anemia, we're gonna see some fatigue, pale skin, uh, or dull or thin hair uh, with that iron deficiency. For vitamin B12, again, we'll get anemia with this one. You can get numbness with a B12 deficiency, balance issues, fatigue, a swollen or inflamed tongue, or memory loss. Folate, uh, this one, again, people call this folic acid. Uh, people with gastrointestinal diseases and non-Hispanic black women, uh, are most likely to have this, uh, but people with long-term alcoholism can also deal with this, and their symptoms would be fatigue, uh, sores in your mouth, uh, not growing or healing well, and then color changes in your hair, skin, or nails. Magnesium, it would be a loss of an appetite, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and weakness. And so those are all the things that we're looking at with those. And so again, go back to the spinach to get these. But if you're going to supplement, because these are very, very hard to get from food, remember your food is about 30% of these things in it than they did in just the 1930s, then you're going to have to look for a quality supplement. Now, unfortunately, most people are taking commercial grade supplements. And, and really the research on these is abysmal. Less than 70% of the supplements on the market have what even the labels say they have. And so it's really, really, really an awful situation. 90% of Americans are deficient in one of those things that I listed here on this previous slide. But even those of us that are getting it from supplements oftentimes are missing out. So I have the opportunity as a healthcare provider to provide any type of supplements. And I, I chose to align myself with Max Living and carry the Max Living supplements as well as the Designs for Health supplements because they actually have in them what's advertised. And not only that, but they're also bioavailable. And if you're taking certain types of supplements, then you're going to be missing out on the nutrients, even the nutrients that it has in there. If your pill is an orange color or is chewable, it's very likely that you're missing out on it. If you're taking a gummy, you're probably not absorbing the nutrients that the bottles say that it has in it. And very, very likely that you're not getting those supplements as well. And so we've put together a bundle of supplements for you that really cover your base as well. And so that starts off with the multivitamin. The multivitamin is the most essential uh, supplement that you can get because it has pretty, it pretty much covers your bases across the board. It's gonna have every single one of those things in it. But then unfortunately, when you're taking all of those things at once, you don't get all of them out of it. And so I find that especially people that are going through pregnancy, that are going through some of these higher stress jobs or have a high level of activity, they need to take a B complex as well. Now the B complex is made up of all of the B vitamins. So whether you're dealing with a B12 deficiency or a B1 deficiency or a B9 deficiency or a B6 deficiency, this covers your basis from the B complex. B complex is a water soluble vitamin. So if there's no, no real danger in getting too much of this, so long as you're supporting yourself with healthy diet, exercise and lifestyle, to support that as well. There are some, uh, there are always uh, pharmaceutical interactions with these. So you can go to drugs.com and type in the drugs that you're taking and see if there's any uh, supplement interactions with those. Uh, but that's a, a great tool is the interactions checker on drugs.com. Uh, the optimal omega, very important one. Everyone should be taking an omega supplement. Omega-3 fatty acids especially are essential fatty we need to have a specific relationship between uh, your omega-3 fatty acids and your omega-6 fatty acids and your omega-9 fatty acids. And that should be one to three to one or somewhere close, sometimes as high as one to one. And what this looks like in the standard American diet, when all you do is eat the foods that most Americans eat, you end up with a ratio of about uh, one to 17 completely distorted highly inflammatory. And th this even breaks down in our cattle. If you get corn fed or, or grain fed cattle, your omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio is about 17 to 1 to 30 to 1. And so when you're getting grass fed, that actually breaks down to 3 to 1. When you get uh, your omegas from you know, salmon or sardines, or you're getting it from chia seeds or flax seeds, and you're getting it in a much purer form. And so the, the optimal omega is in that ideal ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. Now, until we get you there, we have our max omega-3, which is pure omega-3s, and that helps to bring your omegas back into balance until you're ready to take that omega 
that optimal omega supplement. The vitamin D3 and the probiotic, that one is to help supplement for sunshine. And so most people should be getting this. If you don't have enough, if you don't have sufficient levels of vitamin D3, your immune function drops. So you need to be getting the right levels of vitamin D3. And right now the FDA's recommended levels are about, research showed us about two years ago that they're off by at least a factor of 10. When you're getting sufficient levels of vitamin D3, we're seeing a decreased cancer risk of as much as 70% decrease compared to the national average. Uh, we're looking at decreased risk of heart disease or heart attack. We're looking at de decreased risk of falls and balance issues. This is really, I mean, if this was a drug, this would be, you know, right at the high level for being a miracle drug, but it's really just incredible what getting sufficient levels of sunshine will do. So if you're trying to get this from sunshine, you need to be getting at least 30 minutes of full torso exposure between the hours of 10 and 2. So that's also the most dangerous time to get sunshine. Um, so I take a, a baseline of 5,000 I use on a daily basis during the summer, 10,000 I use during the winter and spring and fall months. And then magnesium on top of that. Magnesium, remember, uh, there were 300 enzyme processes that this played a role in, and most of us are deficient in magnesium. I prefer the glycinate, the magnesium glycinate, to uh, something like the magnesium citrate because the magnesium citrate can actually have a diuretic effect on your digestive system, pushing out things before they're ready to come. We don't want to force that. We actually want to make sure that we have healthy levels of magnesium in our body. And Epsom salt baths would do much the same thing. It's a different type of magnesium that's in that Epsom salt as well. So those are the base package. And if you were to buy all of these individually, the value on this is over $130. We've actually put these together in our daily essentials packet so that all of them come in individually wrapped packets and a 30-day supply uh, for about a 35% uh, discount off of the listed price off of each and every one of these supplements, um, or it would be over $130. It's just uh, $99.99 for this entire packet. This is something that I take every day. This is something I have my wife take every single day. And it's something that helps support a healthy pregnancy as well. So if you have any questions, again, you can call or text at 402-413-8825. But to get this, you can go to uh, my website, goodlifefamilychiropractic.com, and then type in uh, slash store or just click the shopping cart at the top of the screen to get this. If you come by the office, you can also set up a mobile order. We'll deliver it to your car if we have it in stock. If you pre-order, uh, we'll let you know when it comes in, but you can get the same discount available at the office. But if you pre-order today for uh, you know, pickup in the office, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a 15% discount off of the list price. So that would just be $85 or $84.90. 97 uh, for the daily essentials packets. So a 30 day supply of those. And so make sure uh, you're visit visiting those. Uh, you can also schedule a consultation from our website as well. Uh, some additional uh, unique nutrients to help support a, late, uh, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, that would include the daily defense. I know a lot of people are focused on uh, supporting a healthy immune system right now. And the antioxidants that are available in the daily defense through the curcumin coming from the turmeric through the melon extracts, uh, through some of the, uh, 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 the <laughs> sorry, blanking right now, uh, the daily defense that keeps, that keeps your immune system healing and functioning at a high level. And then you've got your protein. A lot of people, especially when they work out, they'll go to a whey protein. And whey protein is very good. We actually have three different types of proteins. We have a plant-based protein, the whey protein, and we have a, a bone broth protein here in the office. We find that people are, that are dairy sensitive actually do better with the plant protein or the bone broth protein than do those people that are doing uh, the whey protein. Uh, but the whey protein that we carry here in the, here in the office has no fillers. It's pure whey protein. Uh, one of the things that you want to look for in your whey protein is, is it filled with fillers? Is it just whey protein and maybe some flavors or does it have sweeteners? Does it have maltodextrin in it? Does it have some of those other things that allow them to sell you a big bulky container that make you look like you're getting uh, tons and tons of servings or is it actually whey protein? Uh, and ours is the highest quality that I've ever found among the 50. It really does help support healthy weight loss. The max greens, I know 
so many people struggle to get those five servings of vegetables a day, especially green vegetables. And so we've made a juice powder and capsules both. You can get one or the other that give you up to four servings of greens in a single serving of those greens. And that helps support the, that healthy vegetable intake on a daily basis. And then we've got your detoxes. Uh, so there are certain nutrients that your liver and your kidneys need just to support the healthy detox protocol and help support getting through your digestive system. And so uh, that's a two-part system, our cell detox and our body detox. You take the cell detox first thing in the morning and the body detox last thing at night. And that helps to support the natural processes that happen in your liver and your kidneys and your digestive system and getting those out. And so, again, you can call or text the office to uh, talk to me about whether or not you're a good candidate for those or whether those are right for you. But absolutely, those are uh, essential uh, supplements that I take on a regular basis. So next, we also have vitamin C. So vitamin C is an essential micronutrient that so many of us are deficient in. It's also water soluble, meaning that as you urinate, you're getting rid of excess vitamin C. And we, can, we see that people that superdose with vitamin C or hyperdose is another. They can actually uh, experience high levels of immune function when they're doing that. That doesn't mean that it's a, a, a treatment for coronavirus right now, uh, but it is something that I'm taking on a daily basis and we're offering, offering free samples in the office when people are coming by for their adjustments. Uh, but this is a very important uh, supplement that a lot of people are missing out on because they just don't eat those real foods and so, so high in those green leafy vegetables, uh, but we're not getting those. Uh, and so you can get a 60 day supply here, and I believe the price on that is uh, $21.99. So very, very high quality. You can go to goodlifefamilychiropractic.com slash store uh, to order some to get a home delivery, or you can uh, uh, visit, uh, call or text the office, and you can pre-order that over the phone and then pick that up uh, just from the parking lot. We'll walk that out to the car for you. So what are your action steps? Remember, number one, that the most important essential is the one that you're not. And so plug in to all of those essentials. If you're not getting adjusted, we see that those people that get adjusted have a 200% greater immune competence than those that don't get adjusted and 400% greater immune competence than those who are immune compromised. And so if you want to have a high functioning immune system, you need to make sure that there's no interference to your nervous system. That's not to say that a chiropractic adjustments treat coronavirus, COVID-19. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But if you're going to stay healthy, if those viruses are going to perform uh, the, the right roles inside your immune system and help you develop lifelong immunity, then you need to make sure that your nervous system is healing and functioning well. And chiropractors can help to support that process. If you're not eating right, if you're not exercising, then make sure that you set up a consult with me to talk about those first steps to plugging in. If you, if you know that you're stressed out, we need to start creating peace. If you need to speak to a counselor, you can call my office and I can give you a referral to some good resources that we have here in the area. And then two, uh, we want you to stay plugged in to our upcoming events. And so we have those available. We're doing those on a day by day basis. We are doing these live streams for you to be able to plug in everything. You know, do plug in. Uh, you know, on our website, we have, we're on all forms of social media. Look for Good Life Family Chiropractic. Look for Dr. Jake, Jacob Tucker, DC. You know, look for our podcast, look for radio shows, look for all these things. And we'll make sure that you're plugged in, that you're set up for success and that we keep you moving forward. So thank you for tuning in. For those of you that watched the whole episode, you made it to the end. We got it in, in an hour, I guess, because I didn't have uh, anybody in front of me asking questions, I was able to be a little bit more efficient with this. But if you do have questions, leave those in the comments. You can call or text the office. I get a lot of those directly to my cell phone, and I'm happy to help with anything that's going on, especially during this time of high stress. Our office is open. Uh, make sure that you're uh, checking your emails, reading text messages uh, from the office to keep you updated on the process that we're doing here. But you all stay blessed. Have a great day awesome night and we will see you tomorrow for the next workshop. I'm so looking forward to keeping you guys healthy remotely and in person when you do make it into the office. God bless guys.